Joining us tonight, political commentator, conservative commentator, best-selling author, Ann Coulter. Her most recent book is called In Trump We Trust. And great to have you with us. I, you watched the, uh, uh, something of a love fest uh, in, in the cabinet room with the president today with some, again, of uh, the most unheralded uh, senators serving in either party. Uh, what do you make of it? Um, when Kevin McCarthy is the hardliner on immigration in the room, I think we can call this the lowest day in the Trump presidency. I mean, he was clearly trying to um, overcome the bad press of this Michael Wolff book by showing, oh, he's in command. But in fact, what he did was fulfill every description of him in the Michael Wolff book. He doesn't listen. He has no command of the facts. He agrees with the last person uh, who well, speaks to him. We don't need to, to go I through mean, the whole happening. damn book by Michael Wolff. It's a bunch of trash <laughs> anyway. But what I want to ask you no, is... No, it isn't. No, no, let me, um, yes, second it is. by second, let, he yeah, was no. doing... Well, let me tell you what. Yes, it is. And for the purpose of this... He was doing exactly, literally, 30 seconds. Di Fi says she wants a standalone um, dreamer bill. He agrees with that. Kevin mm -hmm. McCarthy has to step in and say, um, no, sir, I think we need border security first. He agrees with that. He's agreeing with people with a 60-second you... lag. And the Democrats are just taking the position, no, we won't take anything but the dreamers. Yeah, and well, he says, without uh, question, he says that he's going to have the wall. The problem I have, frankly, is that there was no discussion of the sequence in which these events would occur. And we know that if the wall is not, and I mean constructed, built, before there's any discussion of quote-unquote immigration reform, we know what's not going to happen. That wall is not going to be built, is it? No, of course not. And any amnesty is a 100 percent amnesty because it goes to the courts. And the courts will say, oh, you may have limited this to left-handed redheads who came here at age zero um, through no fault of their own. Um, but gosh, we're going to open it up to everyone. Yeah. And then through chain migration, they get to bring all of their relatives. And actually, I, mean, I can't say you're wrong. You can say anything about that press conference today called by Trump himself. He thought this was going to be a great shining moment. At any one moment, you can say he was agreeing to anything. He agreed with Di Fi. Yes, we'll have a standalone dreamer bill, just granting everybody amnesty, and we'll, we'll get to that comprehensive immigration stuff later. No, Lou, this is a disaster. It was the lowest day of his presidency. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more about uh, the difficulty of the day. Let me put it that way. <laughs> uh, look, I, I, am a, I am an absolute committed supporter of this president. I am also absolutely, without question and unreservedly, a, a champion of his wall and making certain that we secure the borders before there is any talk with the... F this was an assemblage of some of the worst lights of the Kennedy-McCain uh, yes. uh, effort to create comprehensive immigration reform. And, and it reminded yeah, yes. everyone in Washington what you do when you don't have a solution is you expand the problem. They made it comprehensive, um, vast. Well, and by the way, and also, still it no seems progress as if on Trump, it. it seem, yes, but it seems as if Trump thinks he's going to get all this great press by giving the left everything well, they want. I promise you, he's not going to get good press from this. They're still going to say he has dementia. Already. If anything, they have more arguments now with him jumping around and abandoning his base. His only, his only hope is to be peddled to the metal, fulfill his promises, build the wall, end chain yeah. migration, and deport these dreamers who are, again, as I said last week, they ought to go before MS-13. They are just a Mexican Antifa. That may be one they of are your... the worst of the illegals. It, you know, and you don't like the way they create so much, uh, much trouble. By the way, the average age uh, of the so-called dreamers, the president himself refers to them as kids. They are far from it. Uh, they he are... corrected himself on that. That yeah. was actually one of the high mo moments of the press conference. I mean, every once in a while, I, I could go through and give you 30 seconds where he was great. But then, but then the next answer is, I'll take the heat. It'll be comprehensive immigration reform. Well, he did say that. It's and not disputing it, the Michael Wolff book. Well, it, it is. Uh, I, well, the reason I don't like the Michael Wolff book is, is because it's filled with trash and fraud and uh, fiction. 
And Anne, you know better than to use it as a, some sort of a compass. Some of it on is. The, on the body. If you oh, actually read it, if you if you exclude the bad stuff, it's not that and bad for Trump. It's you tough are on too the press. Good it's good on the Russian investigation. To sit here and boost a really bad book like that, uh, you know. Um, I, I'm sure those people told him that, and they're the ones who were hired into the White House by Trump. If he doesn't want people bad mouthing, he ought to support. He ought to hire people who supported him. <laughs> yeah, uh, our fine people of integrity, which I think he has now discovered is a is a decided advantage. Ann Coulter, yes. it's always good to have you with us. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, Ann Coulter is the best-selling author. Her, you know, her latest book in Trump We Trust. If you want the best Trump book. Get it in Trump We Trust, big bestseller. And a column, of course, uh, you can get it online. You can go to dot com or follow her on Twitter, Ann Coulter on Twitter, Facebook, and now Instagram. Ann Coulter, how you doing? Fine, thanks. How are you, Mark Simone? Good. You were tweeting up a storm yesterday. You didn't... Well, <laughs> no, I was just being a little testy. You didn't seem happy with the president's uh, meeting there with Congress. No, nobody is, Mark. Well, I... No, I, I, I he's a negotiator. This was stupid, but this was bad having Bannon leave, mostly because there's no one in the White House who actually supported Trump and supported his agenda. I mean, that Wolf book, I totally believe, for one thing, it's actually not bad against Trump, if you've read it. He goes after the media, calls them self-righteous, don't understand Trump, makes fun of the media, makes fun of the Russian investigation. In many ways, Trump comes across very well in the Wolf book, contra his interviews. He's sort of been pigeonholed into being, you know, the pussy hat wearing head of the resistance movement. If you actually read the book, it's pretty interesting and you can discount the false things. But these were all things that people said to him. Um, if you don't want people talking trash about you from your White House, why don't you hire people who supported you? Where is Pat Cadell? Where is Mickey Kaus? Where is Corey Lewandowski? Where is Chris Christie? Oh, I remember. Chris Christie prosecuted Jared's father, so he can't get a job, even though he was the first prominent Republican to support Trump. And you also end up with idiotic press conferences like that yesterday, with Ivanka saying, oh, Daddy, show them your best side. And he 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 sells out his base gives says the first thing he wants to do is is daca we need dreamers right away <laughs> and he accomplishes nothing he wanted to accomplish personally he looked utterly out of it he doesn't understand what people are saying to him yeah he said a few good things you, you could take you could chop it up and find some really great things i loved when he said um um, yeah, okay, so somebody pointed out, well, um, arrests at the border are down. And he said totally correctly, that's because of me and my rhetoric. Once I'm gone, they go right back up again. Brilliant point. That's why we need a wall. Um, he d he was the one who raised when, when he or somebody else talked about the Dreamers as being kids. He said, come on, they're not kids. We're talking about people in their 40s. Great point. Fantastic. And then DiFi says, how about a standalone Dreamer, Bill? <laughs> He's totally for it. Wait a minute, though. I with Michael Wolf, it did, certainly didn't help him with his base. I disagree. Um, Wait, he's a negotiator. That's just opening bids. That's round one. Bid is I'm giving up everything. Ah, that's just round one. It's Ooh, good cop, right. bad cop. 3D chess. I didn't realize you yes. in a negotiation. <laughs> Say I'll sign whatever you send me, and the one thing I campaigned against, I'll sign it. Democrats who do not have a single branch of government. Give up nothing, nothing. Well, they'll end up giving and up. And MSNBC isn't what didn't spend the rest of the evening saying, you know, we saw a different side of Trump. Um, no, they're all giggling that he's getting rolled. No, he'll get the wall in in return for a little DACA. Well, two points. Um, uh -oh. Now in the second year, and we we haven't even broken ground, and. A little DACA is like being a little pregnant. Um, as I've said before, and I will elaborate on in my column today, we've been through this before. Do people not remember the federal courts? Remember the Hawaii judge? Remember the Ninth Circuit? 
any amnesty means 100% amnesty. Number one, the immigration officials in our government themselves, they, they waive all the requirements. They did it. They have done it for every other amnesty, English language requirement. No, nah, we're cutting that. Fees. No, nah, we're, we're waiving those. Back taxes. We can't enforce that. Um, <laughs> oh, no crimes. Well, let's not worry about that. There will be no restrictions on who gets in. Oh, oh, with the ag- special little agricultural amnesty that Chuck Schumer slipped into um, the 1986 amnesty, all you had to do was supposed to be, oh, these poor, poor, hard farm workers, and I actually agree with this, I mean, in theory, um, they've been doing back-breaking work, you have, all you have to do is prove you, you worked on a farm 90 days in the previous year. The court said, oh, how can they do that? They were working off the books. Don't worry about that requirement. Well, so they were accepting, the, I, the INS at the time determined that um, 900,000 of the applications were laughably fraudulent. They had applicants saying, um, you know, they pulled cherries from the ground and the cotton was purple. Of the 900,000, it was actually less than 900,000, I think it was about 860,000, they approved more than 800,000. This will go before the Ninth Circuit in 2007, 20 years after the 1986 amnesty passed. 20 years later, the Ninth Circuit was still granting amnesties to people. Any amnesty is a total amnesty. Okay, so wait. There's no such thing as a little DACA. A little DACA means the entire third world moves here and becomes a citizen and America is over. Let's say he could get this trade, build the wall, the wall gets built, no chain migration, but we have a little DACA. Would that be okay? Again, a little DACA is a little pregnant. No, that overwhelms everything else. It goes to the courts. You must understand the going to the courts part. You have to get that. It doesn't matter what the law says. It will seem so reasonable. Chuck Schumer and Die Five will go on the Sunday morning shows and, oh, it's just the really, really the valedictorians and the ones who served in the military. And then the, the next thing you know, Mohammed Atta is going to be granted amnesty by, by the Ninth Circuit. Any amnesty is a total amnesty. And the let's say we get a wall is getting to be like, let's say I invented a car that runs on dirt. Well, we are going to get a wall, and you got a builder in the White House who can make sure it gets built and on this time. This is why we voted for him. This is what I expected, but it's not happening. Okay, but let's say in the meeting he starts yelling at them and says, well, you're not getting any DACA, and that's it. They would have no, all just left. No, I'll tell you exactly what his voters expected him to do, to, to calmly and reasonably say, um, look, we really need a wall. And, and speaking as a father, I don't want any other parents to have to go through what Kate Steinle's family is going through here. Um, I'm horrified by the tragedy of black unemployment, and we just can't keep doing this um, to, to our fellow citizens. Read the Jordan Report by, by civil rights icon Barbara Jordan. Um, low-wage immigration hurts blacks most of all. Um, they are suffering. We have to put our own people first. So I want a wall um, and the opioid crisis. Um, that's, that's just destroying family after family. It goes well beyond the overdose kids themselves to destroy entire families. This is, heroin is 100% a problem of not having a wall on the border. So I'm insisting on a wall, um, which, by the way, I have the right to build without you guys in Congress. Um, and I must insist. Um, if you care about the working class and especially black unemployment, we've got to end this crazy chain migration and the visa lottery. That's ha- what he should have said. He should not have said, well, DACA, we're going to do first. Well, he did say a very short version of why we have to have the wall. And he said, I don't think any of you would disagree on border security. But I think. Oh, no, no, no. The second they say border security, that's no wall. Border security is what Marco Rubio says. That means we're not doing anything. You're being conned voters. Border security, oh, we'll hire more border guards who aren't allowed to do anything, but we'll be saddled with pensions for the rest of our lives. All right, now here's what's interesting. Ann Coulter goes on with Lou Dobbs last night, and Lou Dobbs was uh, sounding like you, and it's like with Cronkite. When you lose Lou Dobbs, you've lost the country or your base. So, uh, you know, President Trump watches that show every night, and then after that he started tweeting out uh, stuff a little more, uh, al- you know, along the lines of what you wanted, and he's just announced he's going to have a press conference today at 3.20 this afternoon. Who Who is? President Trump. A news conference today, so maybe he'll uh, change his tune Too a little. Too late. I've already written my column. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh. <laughs> 
Well, you know, okay, I'll give him treats when he does good things. But no, he gets a swamp with a newspaper when he does bad things. And that was bad yesterday. Bad with a capital B. All right, no, but that's good because he, when he sees you or Lou Dobbs uh, complaining, he takes that very seriously. So you may have moved him a little. You may have moved the needle on this a little. Incidentally, Lou always, you're right, he is, he's like you, he's a ferocious Trump defender. And uh, whenever I, I criticize the emperor god, um, Lou always jumps down my throat. So when they emailed me after the press conference yesterday and said, can you come on tonight? I emailed the producer back saying, okay, but tell Lou I'm not happy. <laughs> well, he wasn't happy he either. Wasn't either. No, so and the president watches that show. And I think that helped uh, move the needle a little. So we'll see today, this press conference at 320, uh, what kind of difference it it will make. Uh, I think it would just make his life so much easier. I agree with him. He needs a Roy Cohn. Um, And I know who it would be. And it's not some lawyer being moved over from the RNC. The staffing, as you know, I've been screaming from the rooftops about that since, since after the election, since the transition. Uh, he's uh, look his achilles heel is this wanting to be liked by new york swells and the establishment types and goldman sachs that has that is killing him it killed him with the wolf book it is killing him with policy there uh, again mickey cows pat cadell they are brilliant they are harvard graduates they agree with him on all the importance of cadell was hired as a pollster when he was an undergrad at harvard i can name a dozen more like them those are the people he needs, not half of Goldman Sachs. No, all right. I hate to bring this up, Ann Coulter. Mm-hmm. Hey, we better just brace yourself here, everybody. Uh, what about him going to DACA? He's, I mean, I'm mean, going to Davos. He's going to Davos, Switzerland. Um, oh. I gotta say, I don't really care about oh, okay, anything good. else. If he, I, I think it's a little bit silly, and yes, but who cares? Look, he can still do that. Just hire the right people for his White House. And as you, as you know, Mark Simone. Um, <laughs> if if I'm your friend, you will have no more ferocious defender. I don't care if he starts selling Ivanka merchandise from the <laughs> Oval Office. I just want a wall. You're going to get the wall. He's already... Oh! It's coming. <laughs> it's going to be 2020, and you'll be telling me it's coming. It's not that... How long did it take him to build Wallman Ring? A, a day? Did you see when he said, they said seven years? No way, it's going to be seven years. I'll get that thing built fast, and he will. No, I will admit there were flashes of, of fabulosity in that press conference, and you could go through, as I said to Lou last night, I could go through and put together a 30-second tape um, that would make Trump look like the man we elected. But then 30 seconds later, he'd take it back and be agreeing with DiFi that we want a standalone amnesty bill. This is negotiating. This is it's like not it's... negotiating to walk in and give up everything while the Democrats, again, yeah. no branch of government. Nope, we're not budging. We you, want to... He's the master at this. You look like you're giving up everything, but you don't in the end. There's round two, oh, round three. Grief. You are sounding like those nuts with the, the 3D chest. <laughs> um, anyway, I was looking up last night. I know we're getting to the end. Are we getting to the end? But one really interesting thing, I may put this in an upcoming column, Although it's really fun to read through it. I was on Nexus for a few hours last night. Oh, that sounds like fun, yeah. No, it's totally fun. Oh. Um, Oh, my gosh, have the Democrats changed on immigration? It was Democrat. I mean, I knew this generally. But to read op-eds from the New York Times, the Chicago Tribune, the L.A. Times, all of these Democrats saying a couple of years later, the 1986 amnesty didn't work. It's causing a bigger surge. We need security. We need to protect the working class. It's stunning. You should write that as a column next week. It's stunning to read this stuff. Oh, and f- and all of these newspapers totally admitting, um, yeah, okay, the drug problem. Um, and by the way, it wasn't as big a, a drug problem before. Now, now we get 100% of our heroin from from Mexico. Um, but Rodino, one of the the co-author of the 1986 or co named author 1986 um, amnesty. It was Simpson Rodino bill. Two years later, he came out and said. We've got to pass a law ending this, 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 I don't think he said anger baby, but the idea that if you're born here, you're a citizen. Um, and, and the LA Times, I think it was the LA Times editorial said, 
um, because the 1986 amnesty has proved to be so unsuccessful, this Rodino is embarrassed, humiliated. This is what he's proposing instead. Well, that's what they used to think. But then the donors came in and the special interests. and the, Donors the, are the ones bothering the Republicans. The Democrats figured out the amnesty. The illegals are voting for them. That's true. <laughs> well, uh, read Ann Coulter's column. Uh, for, make sure you follow Ann Coulter on Twitter, Facebook. Get her book, In Trump We Trust, and go to annculter.com. You can get everything there. Ann Coulter, thanks for being with us. Good to talk to you, Mark Simone. Bye-bye. Take care.